Yeah, that this issue of what businesses are feeling, what they deem as this level of assault on businesses in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas shameful. is shameful and it continues to anger and outrage not just businesses, Madam Speaker, but outrage Bahamians from all walks of life, Madam Speaker. Let me just say that, and I'm sure every member opposite uh, will emphasize this, we believe that uh, Bahamians, businesses, uh, should comply with the law and whatever is owed to the government, um, uh, and the Bahamian people should be paid. And so this isn't an issue of being anti-compliant or supportive of businesses that do not uh, pay what they're supposed to pay or follow the rules and the laws. But it's evident and it's clear to the Bahamian people. Yes. You know, sometimes they call it the eye test, Madam Speaker, that if you look at something, sometimes you could just look at something and say something is wrong, something is amiss. Mm -hmm. And the reality is for businesses, for Bahamian businesses, to see armed, armed personnel, heavily armed personnel, coming into businesses, Madam Speaker. It is a real problem in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It sends a bad signal, Madam Speaker. It sends a bad, a bad signal to entrepreneurs in this country and people who want to get involved with business. Uh, and there has to be a better way, Madam Speaker, other than having four, five, and six armed guards coming into a business, Madam Speaker, when you think about the impact of that, as I've said, Madam Speaker, we're not talking about um, endorsing businesses that are not compliant with the law or what is expected of them, but something clearly is wrong to the point now where businesses and um, uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce and so forth are, are talking about this issue. And so, you know, Prime Minister, I see that you're here, sir. Um, it is something that has to be addressed. There has to be a better way. I talked about it uh, last week. Can you imagine the impact of... Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Grand Island Rum I accept what the St. Barnabas said. I mean, I, 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 I'm too... I was moved by what I was saying. Um, it, was, it was the thought of it was the enforcement unit. They thought they had to show force to enforce. Um, but in this instance, I have I've expressed that there is a better way, as you have pointed out, and that better way will be employed going forward. I don't expect to see um, scenes as we have seen this going around in the viral um, men going into businesses unless it's, it is a necessary escalation of issues that might apply. And in some instances, the advice I was given was that was that the armed force was present because that they because they were collecting cash as well as at some from some establishment and they were there for purposes of protecting the cash as they were going on. But it was it just spilled over into other areas. And so there'll be a demarcation where they're collecting cash and they need security for the cash, or where they're just going to make inquiries about compliance. And those deep demarcations have been, um, have been, are now being implemented. So we don't expect to see that unless, as I said, it is in circumstances where, where, where cash is being collected from a business establishment and or in cases where there's some escalation of issue between the inquirers and the business places. So the, as you said, there is a better way and the better way would be employed.